Welcome back to the Meatloaf Vlog, ladies and gentlemen. Now, uh, for this episode, I wanted to do something a uh, little different, because E3 is around the corner, and, well, since we all know Nintendo's going to take the win again, okay, we don't know that for sure, but hopefully they do. Um, we just wanted to give our uh, little predictions to, you know, what could possibly show up at E3, and, um, you know, discuss what we already know about it, and... Hopefully, you know, hope for the best, and hope Nintendo brings out some good games, and maybe we'll even talk about some other companies briefly towards the end, but, um, for now, this is gonna be strictly Nintendo-related, so, um, and considering how pretty much everyone else on the internet is, is doing it, too, I thought, you know, why not we, you know, try this out, give it a little test run, especially since this is not, like, you know, Team Triforce episode or anything, so, yeah. So, with me, I have, uh, Lorenzo and Caesar. Who, uh, the latter, by the way, is coming to you live from DR, so, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Hi, from DR. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, that's the main thing public, but yeah. Which, by the way, um, actually, I'm not gonna mention that because then people are gonna start flocking over there, so, um, forget any implications that I just made, and, um, maybe one day we'll tell you guys if we know you better, so. Um, so, um, by the way, Lo Lorenzo, you can take yourself off mute now. For those of you who are unaware of which you are, uh, he was rapping the Pac-Man rap the entire time before we started recording. It was actually a custom-made rap. <laughs> yeah. I was freestyling on Pac-Man. Yeah. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Alrighty. So, um, you guys, you guys already know who they are if you haven't. Go listen to previous episodes or watch our videos. Really? Who am I? Who are you people? <laughs> what is who are you people? <laughs> what is love? Okay, anyways. So... Um, gentlemen, E3, it is just around the corner, and obviously I know all of us are going to be up on Nintendo, so, uh, really? Damn straight. As a matter of, yeah, <laughs> damn straight for sure, but as a matter of fact, even though E3 hasn't actually started yet, we're, you know, the hype train's already been rolling on the tracks, and we've been getting some new trailers leaked out or released, and, you know, other stuff like that about, you know, upcoming like games that were probably meant to be shown off during the E3 uh, weekend and you know probably you know like we were getting information and stuff like that about all these upcoming games and you know it's it's crazy like all of this is coming together at once and you know it's, it's been a crazy week so far um, but um, before we get into any of that we're gonna go with some of the bigger news that we should probably get out of the way first and that is how there's going to be a Smash Brothers Direct on Sunday. It's not going to be a full Direct, it's going to be like a mini Direct hosted by Sakurai himself, and um, it's going to be about, um, well, I don't know if it's official, but um, I'm predicting it's going to be around 20 minutes long, considering it's a mini Direct, and Directs are usually 40 to 40 minutes to one hour long, and um, it's uh, starting around, um, well, it's different for every time period, but for every time period, it's starting around the 40 minute mark on the hours, so it's probably going to be 20 minutes long, so then that way they could just end it off at an even time, because that seems like a weird time to be starting off at. But, hey, um, you know, take, we'll, we'll take what we can get, because, you know, it's a freaking smash to and we're about to get some new information, we're probably going to be, you know, because th 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 this is the same day as Lucas, like, Lucas is coming out on Sunday, along with the Miiver stage, finally, and... Hopefully with this direct, you know, maybe we can get some information on the, the tournament mode that they've been holding up, holding back on since the announcement of it back in, like, the direct where, um, the 50 Facts direct where Mewtwo was announced. It's been a really long time since we've heard from about that tournament mode, and, you know, I'm wondering if that's ever going to become a thing, you know, sometime soon, hopefully. Because, you know, it'd be cool if we could host our own Team Triforce and TFC tournaments, you know, with people online without having to you know, register multiple people at once or, you know, having to, you know, schedule a day where everyone can show up and compete, you know, um, it, it kind of similar to what, you know, Mario Kart is doing. I, I'd, I'd like to see that mode added in pretty soon, um, you know, just to start off the whole thing, so what they could possibly announce in this Direct. What do you guys think they'll be announcing, um, besides uh, characters, which we'll get to in a second? Hmm. See, it's, it's weird. Um, you have to throw the, the, the thinking question at us for the first time. Hmm. Hmm. 
All right. Uh. Ray, you you start off, and then we'll we'll build off from you. Okay. So um. Let's see. Yeah. See, it, it's not. <laughs> Pretty difficult, huh? Well, I don't know about you guys. I know people will probably find it a nuisance, but you know, and people probably think it's not a good idea. But I would kind of like to see more trophies added in as DLC. It's not something that's usually, but you know, I would like to see some more representation of more Nintendo franchises and you know other third-party franchises that have a close history with Nintendo. Because you look at the Rayman trophy and the the Bit Trip Hero trophy, you know, with Commander Video and. You know, the, the fact that those trophies exist in the game in the first place without their franchises even being relevant to this this edition of Smash Brothers, you know, it, it just shows how Nintendo is willing to reach out to these other companies and just, you know, borrow from them parts of their history. You know, even though Rayman didn't even start on Nintendo, he started out on PlayStation, and, you know, it, it's really cool. I, I like it, and I, it'd be really cool if we could see some more representation in the form of trophies as, you know, DLC. I don't know if, you know, that means, you know, you purchase the trophies individually or if you just, like, you know, you get, like, a wave something of trophies. Kind of like Amiibos in a way, but virtual. Like, you collect a virtual wave of trophies. Like, in one set you get, like, I don't know, some new Pokemon trophies, some new Mario trophies, and then you get, like, a third-party trophy like Shantae or... Um, Crash Bandicoot, or whoever you want to add into the trophy line, and, you know, it'd be really Spiral! <coughs> Sorry. Because even if they don't become playable characters at the end of the day, they, it's still cool to just see them being acknowledged in Smash Bros. in some shape or form, through the form of a trophy, and, you know, with the fact that Rayman's trophy being included in the game received really high praise, you know, that's even more evidence that he may end up just becoming playable soon enough, hopefully. So I'm really hoping that we could get some more representation through trophies, if not as characters, then at least through 3D models very soon. Hmm. And I think it would be a good way, because, you know, the, we already have me costumes as, like, you know, waves um, being released individually, so hopefully we can do the same with trophies. Because it, it's not like you're going to be leaving Smash Brothers anytime soon. I mean, really. Yeah, and I totally, I totally agree with you. I really, I really, really, really want uh, a lot more trophies that, that, you know, and stages, stages are really, really, stages, de stages definitely for sure, the, the, yeah, we, we need to get some more DLC, we thankfully, more no, me, the Miiver stage is finally coming with the Lucas DLC, thank god, but, um, yeah, I have a feeling, you know, that we're, we're, we will probably get stage DLC because, um, I know we're jumping the gun a bit here, but, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna go back to those Ryu, like, you know, files that were found in the 3DS, um, uh, 3DS version's recent update, and, um, you know, one of them was, like, you know, the theme of Ryu being found in the 3DS version of the game. Obviously, they wouldn't just add that just to just have it there, you know, obviously that means the stage that Ryu is on from Street Fighter 2 is probably going to be DLC in the 3DS version. Probably, who knows, maybe the Wii U version as well, or maybe we'll get a different stage on that, but, you know, with the fact that they added Ryu's theme song as part of the files from the recent update, that probably means we're probably going to get Ryu's stage in the 3DS version. I have her also heard rumors that um, the Kirby's Dreamland stage from um, 64 is going to be coming back on the 3DS version, which is actually really cool because I kind of missed that stage, and that was kind of the original battlefield since there was no real battlefield outside of classic mode in the 64 so it'd be really cool to see that come back you know into the recent games especially since the donkey kong stage came back and really we need we need more 64 stages to come back in general and the 3ds seems like the perfect place for them to be at if not the wii u version but yeah you know i want to see saffron city come back that's like, that's like one of my favorite stages i know nes players don't really like that stage because of you know pk thunder being ineffective between the buildings but still you know that doesn't mean it's still not a classic stage and that doesn't mean that they can't fix it up for nes players you know and you know also i'm pretty sure people want to see the real hyrule castle come back from you know the ocarina of time and you know all these other mm -hmm. stages like the, the, the 64 stages they were really creative stages and you know why not bring them back? 
but wh why just bring back the Donkey Kong stage is great, it's historical, but why just leave it at that? Why not bring in more? And you know, you know, and that that's the thing. I want in like you said, you very detailed. Um I really want more characters. Uh, and you know, I, like you said we're jumping the gutter, but everyone wants this. We want more characters. Give us yeah, the entire sure. like yeah, let's just like pile every single video game character in life onto this freaking Super game. Brothers, everything. Exactly. Everyone. Goku. You can uh, now play. You can now. Uh, the, the Polar why Express stop, conductor. Why stop at video games? Let's throw in the first party characters. Let's yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. The Goku, let's throw in fifth. The the, 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 uh, the Polar Express conductor with Santa with Claus Hanks, with Tom Hanks reprising his role. Uh, that hobo on top of the pole. This the is the North Pole! And then his final the smash is Polar Believe! The, the Polar Express conductor's final smash is summoning the Polar Express itself to run over the opponents. <laughs> and then the people on, on the train come out and they pour hot chocolate all over them, dealing with extra burn damage. Oh, why just stop there? Throwing the, throw the uh, MOP ponies as well. <laughs> Yeah, let's get the main six in here. This is the freaking <laughs> Rainbow Power Final Smash. Let's do this. Get this cord. Chaos. Yep. Perfect counter to Super Smash. Hey guys, I want Toon Link and Smash. Which one? Toon Link. Yeah, but there's like different Which... links. There. Wind Waker. <laughs> He's already in though. Really? Oh, I didn't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Now I want Young Link back. I really do. I wish they, you know... It, Young Link was cool, though. Like, oh, Young Link was, you know, sort of like a fan favorite among people back in Melee. And honestly, if you ask me right now, I wouldn't mind him seeing, see, seeing him come back. I know as crazy as that sounds and how much negativity I'm going to get for seeing that from the internet. But really, con considering the fact that, you know, they, they brought him into Hyrule Warriors. And, you know, I, I always think back to that Game Theory episode where they explained how Young Link, uh, spoiler alert, was... Well, probably the most dangerous link of them all because of you know the different masks and the gear he has, yeah. the grapple yeah. hook and everything. And, yeah, you know, the one from If they would have made that his moveset in melee, that would have made him a really unique character. He probably would have stayed in Smash as a staple character, and we probably possibly would have had three links in Smash Brothers, and it would have been good because you know we have like three different. You know, three different genres of Link being represented. You know, we have the Twilight Princess Link, we have the Ocarina Link, and we have the, um, you know, the the cartoon cartoon game Link. So, you know, why not have all three on the giver? I know if they bring back Young Link, they'll probably just port his moveset from Melee into the game. But, you know, that doesn't mean that his custom moves can't be... Well, then again, Mewtwo didn't get custom moves. But, you know, if assuming he gets custom moves, they could probably just make it in the mask. Or if anything, they could just redesign them all together, you know. Sakurai could always just backtrack and totally redesign Young Link, but, you know, I, I've been looking it through, and he's honestly a character I wouldn't mind seeing come back. I don't know if he's likely to come back, but considering the, you know, Majora's Mask 3D being a total success, obviously, and with the Hyrule Warriors DLC with Young Link, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing him in there. I agree. Uh, oh, oh. I know he's just a uh, he's just an assist trophy, but wouldn't you guys like to see a uh, Skull Kid in there? It'd be pretty interesting. I just wonder what he would do, though. Ooh, let's get the whole. He could probably do a lot of stuff, but uh, again, you know, when a character is added to Smash Brothers, it's Sakurai's job to design their moveset. So, you know, when when they become a character, he can think of something, unless he outright says that you know they're not unique enough to be in the game. Hmm. Well, it's I feel like. like what were you saying, Caesar? I feel that like Gary him and Minna would be are like unique enough to have like their own moveset, even though they're assist trophies. I wouldn't mind seeing the Viper. People wanted to see Impa show up too from Hyrule Warriors specifically. Oh, and, you know, yeah. All, th all three of those characters, and if you ask me, are, are fine options if by you know in my book. And yeah, I really want um I want Pokemon Trainer and the likes back. Um, I would love to see Pokemon Trainer come back too. The yeah. only problem is though is that you know the, the reason why he was well I'm assuming he he never outright 
Pokemon Trainer's never been explicitly stated anywhere outside of his trophy in Smash 4. Like, Sakurai has never acknowledged him or anything, but uh, probably the, mo the most likely reason why he isn't in the game anymore and why Charizard is a standalone character now is because of the 3DS limitations and how Sakurai needs to keep both games, you know, the they need to keep them, like, you know, simultaneous. He needs to keep them the same with the same roster, which is why the Ice Climbers got cut, why Sheik and uh, Zelda were separated, and why Zero Zoo Samus and regular Samus are separate characters. Because mm. it would take a toll on the processing power of the 3DS having to load characters in the middle of a fight. Granted, though, it they do that in a classic mode, or in all-star mode, when you fight the characters in there. Yeah, all-star mode. When you, when you play All-Star Mode on the 3DS, it, it loads characters in the middle of the battle, but you, it should be noted that it, it takes longer for them to load a, load the characters off of the cartridge and into the game when you're playing All-Star Mode. Like, you notice when you play All-Star Mode, it takes like 30 seconds for a new character to show up after you beat all of them on screen, so, you know, we can't have that happening during a normal match, especially since that never happened during Brawl, so, um, despite the fact that the um, 3DS has more processing power or whatever it is than the GameCube, it's, it's still kind of limited in the, you know, the fields that, you know, in, in the fields that would have made Ice Climbers playable. Mm. And, for all, and, and, and for all those people out there who are arguing that Rosalina, Luma, and, you know, the Pikmin and everything, like, how varied the 3DS version put the Ice Climbers are not, simply put, the Ice Climbers are two individual characters controlled by one person. Um, and exactly. Nana is basically like an, an artificial AI. Like, she, she, she's basically a computer player that follows the player. On the other hand, Luma, the Pikmin, they're just items with... They just happen to be items with eyes on them. And... Oh, wow. Well, you know, and I, I hate Skype sometimes because they may, I can't tell when I'm talking and when I'm not. Anyways, um... No, and I totally agree. Like, I really want a lot of the old characters back, and I want a lot of a whole bunch of new characters. Like, where's the cast of High School Musical? Come on. Hell yeah! But I mean, I really want. Let's go. Yeah, you know, like let them be like Wii Fit Trainer. Like. Blue bets on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, no, that's Zac Efron. Zac Efron bets on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sharpay is fabulous. <laughs> or yeah. Anyways, well, well, while we're on the yeah, just... of Disney, let's add Zach and Cody. They're confirmed. Like D Dylan and Cole are like confirmed Smash fans. So why not? Yeah. Hell, you know, and hey, that hey, that would be cool hey. too. Hey, don't stop Hannah there. Montana. Why not add... Don't stop there. Why not add Corey as well? Corey. Dude, <laughs> best anime ever, man. <laughs> Wait, imagine this. Um, Hannah Montana gets the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be cool. Um, That's so I def sweet Smash Brothers life. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to see a crossover between a uh, Cartoon Network Battle Star. Oh, wow! Punch Time, <laughs> Punch time Explosion. And and, and, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I messed up that title too. Uh, PlayStation Battle Royale also. Be interesting, but then again, it'd be PlayStation exclusive, and none of us would get it. No, it wouldn't. Yeah, it um, would, if, you, if you're saying cross, if Cartoon Network crossover with PlayStation and Smash, and Smash, yeah, and Smash. Yeah, but, yeah, but then if you put Smash in there, it's outright impossible because then we can't. We, that game doesn't exist. We can't have it on the same console. That's like putting Mario and Kratos in the same game together. Yeah, that'd be yeah, exactly racist Mario. Hello, <laughs> it's like like um, oh yeah, Kratos, why? <laughs> <laughs> Screw you, Kratos. I can't say the f word because we need to keep keep it safe for work and meatloaf clock. But yeah. But anyways, on on a serious note though, um, all jokes aside, it'd be really cool to see some old characters return again. I really really want to see Snake come back. Like. Kojima has already given, you know, Sakurai permission to use him. You know, he outright said, you know, if you want to bring back Snake, you know, bring him back if you want to. 
and you know he, he and he retweeted like a, a custom snake amiibo f the, that was like put out the other day like he retweeted it so he's in full support of snake coming back you know whether it be by the ballot or by sakurai's own choice so i'm really hoping that he gives snake a second shot and adds him in you know even though they want to keep that e10 rating but yeah. then again you managed to get an m-rated character into a t-rated game so i don't see how they couldn't fit him in the game plus you know snake was in um a TV, a uh, Japan-only release game that was like Smash Brothers with uh, Hasbro characters and uh, Konami characters and all that. It was called a tr TV Dream Mix World Fighters, I believe that was the name of it. And I'm pretty sure the equivalent rating in Japan and other countries of where that game was released was like rated, you know, E for everyone, basically. So, you know, if Snake can be in a game like that, you know, they could tone him down. Then, you know, I don't see how he can't come back in Smash Brothers, especially since the rating is not E but E10. So yeah. it's already a given that it's supposed to be for a generally older kid audience. And um, one of the, and me, I think I brought this up with you earlier. Um, I wanted to see, I want to see probably like, even though she's a Sony, I, she's kind of a Microsoft style. I like to see Lara Croft in there. That'd be cool. Well, I mean, Lara Croft is in Microsoft exclusive, but is that her games have been primarily published on Microsoft? Her recent games, mind you, not all of her games. But her more recent games have been primarily published on Microsoft consoles. As far as, far as I'm aware, though, like, um, because um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure she's not a Microsoft exclusive character. Plus, you know, if she was, then, well, if if I'm wrong, you know, c feel free to correct me in the comments. But please don't, you know, get on my back because I'm not a total video game aficionado. But, um, you know, if, if she is a Microsoft exclusive character, then we can then have a crossover. Over yeah. Uh, exactly, and um, it, that and it, it kind of just um. See now, you 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 brought up an interesting topic, Ray. I hate you for that. <laughs> um, you know who I really want in Smash? Who? Domo. <laughs> and the Energizer Bunny. And the Energizer Bunny. There you go. And the Energizer Bunny. It's like three clones in one game, man. You and the Energizer Bunny. Enough. He just keeps Enough on going and going Enough. and going and going. Because <laughs> it's it's good. Home Depot. But anyways, all jokes aside, because we really need to get serious here. Um, yeah. Um, I'm really hoping that they announce Ryu in this Smash Direct. Like I'm, I'm really really excited for Ryu, because you know he. Sakurai would have no other reason to include those files in that update other than the fact that, you know, th those files are probably there as a reserve for when he for when he's at it. And, you know, you know, knowing Nintendo, he's if Rio does get announced um this coming E3, he's probably not going to be out for quite a while, if not late in the summer. Quite honestly though, I really hope that he's released earlier than that cuz I I love Ryu, you know, I love playing as him in the crossover games, I love playing as him in Street Fighter, he's one of my favorite fighting game characters, if not THE most favorite fighting game characters of all time, and seeing him in Smash would be awesome, and it would also, you know, eliminate the factor of how, you know, a company can't have more than one representation of a character, because just because Mega Man is here doesn't mean that Ryu can't be in, and it looks like Ryu's on his way to get in anyway, so, yeah, I'm really hoping that he does get announced, and it kind of seems likely considering that you know Street Fighter f Street Fighter 5 is like getting some coverage I believe at uh, E3 for PlayStation and hopefully with Ryu's inclusion in Smash it could mean that Street Fighter 5 would also come to Wii U or maybe even 3DS who knows but it would be exciting to see him in there and hopefully this c it, with his inclusion it could prob probably make the you know path down the way to a Nintendo versus Capcom crossover that they've been wanting to do for some time now, and I would really, really love to see. Especially since the Nintendo console kind of needs one ever since. Uh, you know, you can't really play Tatsunoko versus Capcom online anymore since Nintendo Wi-Fi shut down. But, yeah. So oh, I, I've been meaning to show you guys something, but and, and it's really cool, so I'll show it to you guys in the chat. Oh. I'll show you guys in the chat first chat. But, okay. um, it, it kind of just relates to your, your last point, and um, how they shut down Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, and now you 
buy like Wii points cards and stuff like that. And so, yeah. But anyways, you know, and a lot like I actually um I don't know if this relates, but I I really actually want to see more online online play. Um, like, yes, I know, we can fight each other, yes, I know, we can play games with each other, but you know what, think of something, yeah, like, think of something a little more creative, even though there really isn't any other way to make it a little more creative. Kind of just... Something that has, like, a training mode online, or, you know, something like that, maybe, like, a, you could do event modes online, or other kinds of stuff. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, Space and Missouri is one of the things that really made Brawl, like, stand out from the Smash games. I just love and, and yeah, I'm looking at the picture right now, Lawrence. I see the, the different cards, how now it's changed from money and from, you know, it used to be Wii points, now it's just money. Well, the point the point of that that I said about with the picture, I don't know if you, can, if you want to put this in the, the podcast. Was that they don't sell? They don't sell. Yeah, they don't sell Wii points cards anymore. And I went to I went to my to my local Family Dollar, out of all places, Family Dollar, and they had a stack. They had a whole entire stack, not just a single one or four. They had an entire stack of two thousand Wii points cards for regular price, and I was like. I think I want some. I didn't buy I'd some. I really I'd want some. Are, I'd imagine those are probably hard to find nowadays. They're, they're extremely hard to find. Slowly being, you know, pushed out of like the horizon, and you know, now nowadays, if you want to buy, like, you could still buy games on the eShop. Thankfully, not not the, the Wii Shop channel, but if you want to do that, you either have to, you know, scout for a Wii Shop card in whatever, whatever neighborhood you're in and hope you find one. Or you have to have a credit card, or you know, a Visa gift card, like we usually prefer. In fact, this this uh, family dollar is right by where Ray lives. Huh. <laughs> to go, to go check it out. Get some yeah, I didn't I didn't get a chance to tell you that. I'm sorry, Ray. <laughs> are they still twenty dollars? Yes, they are. Already. All right, so that's an easy way for me to do it without having to use my credit card. At least they're not expensive. But yeah. Well, that, well, what's that? So anyway, back on topic, um, anything else you guys, um, are expecting from Smash, besides seeing Sakurai again? I mean, the Smash Direct, that is. Hmm. Nothing, you know, besides the, the, like, I want more characters, etc., and trying to, like, and just a lot of new additions, I just kind of want to see some of those, uh, like, even though this has nothing to do with, like, connections, connection, like I said, with online playability, I want connections between characters to be all, and not characters, team players to be a lot more stronger, even though it, it kind of cuts lag a, a lot. Even though you can't really do that, unless you, like, include more rooms and stuff like that, but I think... It's it's something definitely to look into, even though I'm sure Nintendo probably has no control over that. But it's just, you know, and this is kind of Nintendo in general. I really like to, they're, to they're see them. Yeah, I really like to see them completely change their uh, their way they play online, and because it kind of it kind of does slow down uh, a lot when I play with Caesar, and he's literally like four miles away from me. I know that seems like a lot, but in terms of the general area, I'm playing with people from Japan, and they have better connection than, let, let's say, me and me and Caesar, or me and Isaac, who, by the way, Isaac lives closer to me, and he and me and him, whenever we smash it, it's the worst, worst, con worst connection ever. 
Don't even get me started about me and Ray. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Hopefully this uh, new upcoming tournament mode will, you know, be like the start of a whole new, like, collection of, you know, potential new modes that they could probably add to Smash in the future that, you know, will involve, you know, online interaction and, you know, a, a lot of, you know, cool new features that we, we could probably see. Caesar, any last thoughts? Oh, and more Street Pass. Sorry. Oh. In terms of like, well, we pretty much, well, alone, it's pretty much like we like hit the nail on the head of like stuff that that we would like love to see for like uh for like Smash for like updates. Uh, in terms of like uh more like uh added stuff for online, I would definitely love to see uh, them try to do uh add a player mode for online Smash. That I want to see. I mean, I know it would be crazy. It would probably over service with like eight different people on at once or you know four different people if like you have co-op mode on but you know it, w it would it, it'd be an exper a good experiment to see you know to see how it goes because you know nintendo they, never really, you, you never really know until you try it the thing is like with the service that they really should like make them better and like connect and like make connect like the people that have like good connection and like like because if it were to work, like, if, if they should, like, have it like that, so that way, like, it would not be something like some people with good connection, but that one person that has a crappy connection, like, uh, Like, that's one thing the service could approve on, like, uh, like, having, like, people with good connection, like, in a home, and not having that one person with that connection, like, improve, messing up the match. Yep. What's that next this yeah. Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder I how much he's gonna be for stage and hype train to Ryu. I wonder how much Lucas is gonna be. I haven't actually checked that. It's probably not expensive, but you know, obviously, you know, ho hopefully, hopefully by this weekend, if not next week, we have like the money to buy him because we gotta cover him on Green and Purple eventually. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, go check out Green and Purple Links Hangouts over on Team Triforce. Link in the description below. And for the Lucas coverage, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we will get we will get a copy of Brawl, like we will get a copy of Brawl, so that we can uh, show Lucas uh, of how he was in Brawl, and then we'll do, then we'll do yes. it. and watch this video and leave a comment and a like, and we'll provide you with a hundred dollars. Which may or may not actually be true. <laughs> you heard it from this guy. Yep, and so you let so us know. So all jokes aside, so we don't get into any more segues, uh, let's move on to some other things that were revealed this week, such as the, uh, the trailers for some Nintendo games, some like of which were either leaked or maybe they've been officially announced. Um, I don't really know too much, but one thing that was definitely totally unexpected and not, in not intended to be announced so soon was... My mind the imploded. The Hyrule Warriors on 3DS, which I am so hyped for. This is insane! I remember, like, I was in I, I was in class, well, I don't know if I was in class, probably at lunch. Yeah, I was at lunch, and I was checking the, um, my subscriptions, because I always check my YouTube subscriptions to see what's there to watch in between classes. And I see the, like, you know, I see Game Explain, I see Etika, I see all these people, like, uploading videos of, from, like, you know, you know, tra new Nintendo trailer leaked, you know, spoilers and everything, and... It's like a friggin' Hyrule Warriors 3DS, and it has Tetra and the King in it. And like, the King! My oh boy. Okay, well, not that King, but it is a I, King. I, I know, I'm just... Lawrence, what are you we, doing? I'm just we're cheering. Gonna be, we're gonna be making those jokes anyway when we get to the coverage video. Cause, yeah, we're, we're not... Caesar, we're not done with the Hyrule Warriors co DLC coverage as far as I'm worried. Because when Woo. this comes out on 3DS... Enough, oh. Lawrence. Oh, oh far <laughs> Definitely not as soon done. as this comes out on 3DS, we're gonna be covering this. Like, we're gonna be transferring Tetra and the King, like the King, over to Wii U, and we're gonna be playing as them. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I, I saw at the end of the trailer that showed that, like, apparently, like uh, Tetra and the King can be transferred to yeah. the Wii U, which and would I'm be so. I'm so hyped for it. Like, th those are the last characters I expected to show up in this game, especially in th they're showing up in their original forms too. So it's it's kind of cool how. You know, outside of Smash Brothers, we get to see, 
you know, the tomb, the tomb forms of these characters, like, alo alongside the regular human, realistic looking, like, Zelda characters, and it's kind of cool how we're just literally, we keep saying it over and over again, this is literally Zelda generations, we're getting in all the Zelda characters all together, they're all playable, and they're, you know, their, their purpose of being together is to, you know, beat the ever-living crap out of evil and all these enemies on screen at once, we're yeah. all these insane Marvel vs. Capcom like special moves. I told and I totally agree, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm excited that it's coming to three DS because at this time I don't own a Wii U unfortunately because I don't have the money for it, but you know, now that it's coming to three DS I can actually experience, you know, the owning the game myself and playing through it. You know, there, there's gonna be some limitations obviously because you know three D S is not gonna be as expansive as the Wii U, but still I'm excited to finally get that experience and you know, with the fact that they're already starting us off with new characters, you know, that, that's great. That's a great way to pull people into it, and, you know, maybe hopefully there's, like, Amiibo functionality. And thankfully, it's not, it's not a new 3DS exclusive title. It's going to be for any 3DS user, so there's that. And, you know, hopefully yeah, thank, there's... Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can still use Amiibos for this. Maybe, maybe they'll add even more functionality as time rolls on. Maybe they'll announce some new stuff for it, hopefully. And, um, you know, hopefully it'll be just as good as the Wii U version. And um, something I wanted to bring up, which is really cool and I really hope happens, is the fact that um, some sharp-eyed viewers actually noticed in the trailer that um, if you look closely at one of the shots where all the characters are all together on the screen, there's actually like a bow and arrow there sticking out um, that pops up hidden behind many other uh, character artworks. And it shows up at the same time that Agatha shows up on the screen. But, you know, Agatha doesn't use you know, a bow and arrow, as we all know, and it doesn't. When you look at it on the screen, it doesn't look like look like it's aligned to her arms. It looks like it's where her leg is at. So this is, you know, and considering the fact that there's no other weapon separate on the screen, you, this is hinting that um, the female link that was originally planned for Hyrule Warriors might actually be playable in the 3DS version, which will be really freaking awesome. Now, um, there, ha there have been some clarifications. Um, first off, the female Link is actually... Well, we don't know if she's going to be called this in the final game if she does get added, but she's called Linkle in the um, in the concept art for characters who could have been in the game. And um, she uses that bow and arrow as her main weapon, and you look at the trailer, it looks exactly like the one in the concept art, so it just has to be her. And, you know, no other disembodied weapons are theirs on screen alone that bow so you know that, that it just can't be there for no reason they had to have put that there intentionally and fans were really clamoring to have her in the game and you know i'm excited to see her in, in the game it's been stated that she's the younger sister apparently of the link that's in hyrule warriors which is actually an interesting take because you know how many of link's relatives relatives have you really seen being playable characters in any zelda game i mean really this would be Cool. Yeah. And I, I I need to and this is a pure confession, I need to buy Hyrule Warriors as soon as possible. Both. Both. Exactly. You really need But to I need to it. focus on the Wii U first because I that's the first in the series. And then I can get the one for the for the three D I mean, later. Obviously I'm gonna get it on the Wii U version eventually. It's just when I get it, it's just a matter of when I get the Wii U. But I'll be happy Sell with the 3DS version when I get the money for it. And I'm really hoping that there's more DLC beyond what we've already seen. You know, maybe, maybe hopefully the crews can be loose. Because we haven't really seen much of Skyward Sword in this game, really. Other than Fi and Gyrium. And the DLC costumes. Oh yeah, true. So it would be cool to see, you know, a supporting character from that game, you know. When, because you... Listen, we have Tinkle in the game, we have the freaking king in the game. Why not add Groot? He seems like a perfect fit for this. I am Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> and the Groot will be loose. I am loose Groot. But yeah. <laughs> we are all. We just got a letter. We just got a warrior. Yeah, we okay, just. <laughs> I heard, I heard, uh, uh, Blue's Clues. I swear to God. I, we clearly said Groot, Groose, and Loose. <laughs> not Blues and Clues. 
<laughs> we just got a ruby. We just got a ruby. We just got a ruby. We're not at that meatloaf vlog episode yet. I wonder who's from. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, so, um, what do you what do you guys think about like you know anything else you guys want to say about the 3ds version of uh, Hyrule Warriors and you know any DLC you want to see show up, any new f features and modes? Well, obviously, I can definitely say I'm excited. Like the fact that now we have two additional new characters, Petra and the King. Like, oh, uh, just like now, now we get to like now we get to destroy people as a boat. It's just so awesome. I mean, and like, you, you can you can actually recreate the whole like, hey, ladies, you come here often in Hyrule Warriors. Huh, that's gonna be so fun. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. I'll uh, slay with a boat. Hurry. The boat is on you. <laughs> the boat's on me. The boat's on me. Boat's on you. Boat's on the boat. I'm playing as the boat. I mean, the boat's the on boat. you. <laughs> Take a good hard look at the mother trucking boat. Because it's falling right on top of me, so you're going to get a good look at it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're looking forward and you're like a Dodongo that just looks forward. Can't look up. Enough. My ship sails in Hyrule Warriors. Yep. Check it out in spring 2015. Yep. I cannot wait. Wait, was that is that a real day? Nah. Oh, okay. Uh, check it out in fall 2015. Check it out when it comes out. Very uh, I will say fall 2015. Anyways, um. In. So, in terms of. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. In terms of DLC, uh, I definitely. I'm sorry, I can't hear you at all, Caesar. If they add, it would be interesting if they add, if they added like, uh, so how like we have like a, like a plan of DLC that we have in our wars for the English. It would be interesting if they added like a DLC or like maybe the version. Caesar, you kind of sound distant. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you, Verizon Man. I think it would be interesting if we saw, like, a Wind Waker map <clears throat> for the 3DS version. Oh, man, that didn't cross my mind. Yes, more maps, we need that. Like, based on uh, other Zelda games. Because we have, Because we have, like, Tetra and, like, the King playable, so why the hell not? Exactly, yeah. Because, like... When we had, because when we had like a uh, Twilight Midnight join, like we had like the Twilight Princess map, we have, uh, we have Tingle and Young Link, and we have them the Terminal map. It's, it, it doesn't seem far fetched that if we're gonna have the King and Tetra available, like why the hell not add a Wind Waker map? We probably will get that, yeah. It's, it's yeah, we're probably gonna, you know, maybe we just don't know about it. Maybe it will be like part of the 3DS. That would be cool to see, like, you know, Wind Waker map. I wonder how they'll, they'll handle it. Maybe it'll be on the pirate ship. I'm not sure. But that would be really cool to see. Yeah, I want to see Female Link. That's yeah. definitely one of the things that everybody is speculating about. The fact that Hyrule Warriors could finally feature a female Link. Yeah. They so. Really do something that the canon games can't do. And people are, people are saying that, you know, if they add Female Link into this game and she's, you know, well-received, you know, they might just... That, that, that might just inspire Nintendo to add her to a main title, so, you know, let's, you know, let's get that in there. The Legend of that Link. Mm. That was, and let's not stop the spot. DLC there, you know, with maps and characters, like, you know, maybe we could see, like, you know, I'm surprised Toon Link isn't actually a DLC character. You know, and yeah, I was just about to say that, I really want Toon Link in this game. I have a feeling, you know, maybe, maybe he has a shot, I don't know if he will get in, because, you know, we kind of already have Tetra representing Wind Waker, but... It would be cool to see because then we could finally have like three the three different links in one game together, the you know the adult link, the young link, and then the two link. Yeah. Because there, there's never been an official game with all three of them, as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, no, I totally agree. I agree. It it would seem not ideal seeing how like. 
pay attention in the game, so like, why the hell am I uh, at home? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, and even though like uh, Zelda already uses the Wind Waker, I'm sure they they can come up with like uh, like different ways of them for using weapons. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. More, more weapons from the, D the Zelda games. I'd like to see that. Oh yeah. I still have a feeling we might just see Ravio playable. Oh my because god, he, yes! Because he kind of, <laughs> he, he kind of is another Link. I know Henry himself is against the idea, but... You know, I, I still don't think it's out of the realm of possibility, because there's so much you can do with him, especially considering what they've done with the other characters. I mean, you could give literally just give him the items in his shop. Because <laughs> people have built fan-made smash movesets out of, out of those weapons for Ravio, so why not? Let's get Henry in this. Let's get Henry playable. <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't seem... I mean, that that definitely would be an interesting concept, because like, uh, when Tingle was added, I thought to myself, like, hmm, I, I never would have thought of how like, they could have made Tingle like, like a playable character in Harold Wars, but hell, oh, he's fun to play as. You know, if we're gonna get represent representation of all the best Zelda games, you know, why not? Just, you know, get one of the, probably the most memorable representative from there. You know, the, the Link of the Dark World. The Link of Lord, yeah. The, well, same thing, really. Because mm. that was like a direct sequel to Link, of, Link to the Past. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, almost a direct. Yeah. More of an indirect sequel, it comes after the story. But anyways, yeah. You know, I agree 100%, you know, more DLC maps and characters would be great for, you know, c c considering the fact that we, we all thought that they were going to stop with the DLC after Ocarina of Time, and we were hoping that they wouldn't, and it looks like they are, and considering there's a friggin' 3DS version coming with new characters and such, and that you can actually transfer to Wii U, so, yeah, I don't think they're stopping here, I don't think they're going to stop with Hyrule Warriors, and hopefully this also means that they're not going to be stopping with Mario Kart or Smash Brothers anytime soon, because... You know, those are literally Nintendo's big three titles right now, if you ask me. You know, Hyrule Warriors, Mario Kart, Smash. When you dig, a, when you dig Wii U... And Splatoon. Day, and, Splat and Splatoon, as of recently. When you, dig, when you dig a Nintendo, you dig up those... The Wii U, that is. You dig up those four games. They're bestsellers. Yeah. But yeah. So, um, real quick before we get into our predictions, um... Do you guys have any thoughts on the upcoming Dr. Mario and Rhythm Heaven game that was also uh, that's also coming out that was um, revealed this week? I'm sorry, say that again. The upcoming Dr. Mario and Rhythm Heaven games that are that had, that had trailers come out this week. Quite honestly, I cannot wait for the Dr. Mario game because I do play my fair share of Dr. Mario. Uh, Rhythm Heaven, I can't. Um, I don't really play a lot of, so it'd be interesting to see what they have in store for this game. So. Rhythm Popular and successful, you know, I'm really well loved Nintendo games out there, so I would really love to get into the games at some point, and they look really fun, and I would love to try them out, especially with this new game coming to 3DS, I believe. I think it's 3DS, if not Wii U, then, you know, whichever new game is coming out, I'd like to try it out. And, um, Dr. Mario also, you know, it's good to see that, you know, Nintendo's not stopping, you know, the Mario puzzle game thing anytime soon, you know, because. I'm pretty sure a lot of people, you know, like Lawrence, love Dr. Mario, and, you know, I like Dr. Mario, and, you know, we, we have, have we had a Dr. Mario game on 3DS besides, like, Dr. Luigi? Uh, well, I have, do I have a Dr. Mario game on the, on the 3DS, That's but it's an eShop, yeah, it's an eShop title. So, not really, no, so this is gonna be, this is kind of exciting. Yeah. But yeah. Even though I I don't know what why. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm excited for all these new games coming, and you know, hopefully we can learn more about them when E3 rolls around. So on that note, um, let's uh let's get some predictions.
predictions and years, um, some hopes and dreams for what Nintendo will probably announce in their, um, you know, their Nintendo Direct, their, um, what is it called again? The, uh, the digital event. And maybe some gameplay we could see at the Nintendo Treehouse, which was a really cool feature that they added last year. And, um, yeah, what do you... What do you guys look forward to seeing? It could be like, you know, co go completely wild, you know, with what you I want to see Goku and Smash. But we we finished <laughs> Smash already. Okay. Um no, honestly, I heard rumors about a new Metroid game. Yeah, I've heard something out too from Platinum Games, I believe. And so that's going to be something I look forward to. That um definitely more information on the new Zelda game, the Zelda Wii U game. Hopefully it's not that um, that I definitely want to see. More information on Nintendo Next slash Nintendo NX. Those I know there won't be too much information. Hopefully we can at least, you know, learn more about what it actually is and what it does and all that. Because as, as far as I'm aware right now, it's pretty much just a name. Um, pretty much that's it. And, you know, I... I want to see a lot more events, definitely, throughout the year. For So, you know, the tournament's one thing. Yeah, but you know, the World Championship's coming. Yeah. Out. Nintendo World is doing pretty well at the whole organizing events for for everybody. It's really cool. Yeah, because last year we had the Smash Shirt. Like, that kind of like, I don't know if it was the first official one, but, you know, that, that was like an, a, a, a big official, you know, a bro a broadcasted Smash Brothers tournament official hosted by Nintendo. Oh, oh, right, the, the Smash Bros. 3DS one. That was the one, right? Yeah, like, you know, yeah, the 3DS tournament and the Wii U, the big Wii U tournament that they invited the competitive Smash Brothers to, you know, where all the memes like, you know, Super Thuddy, Robot, where all of that originated from, and, you know, that was a huge, huge success last year, and, you know, they're capitalizing on that with the World Championships, and hopefully that turns out successful. I'm looking forward to watching them when, you know, the live streams for that get set up, and, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, who can get to the end of the Legend of Zelda NES game first, which is going to be what they're doing for the event, and, um, you know, I'm excited, oh. it's going to be nostalgic, again. it would be cool if they held another Smash Bros. tournament, but I have heard no news on that, so I don't know if it's going to happen, I don't think so anyway, but it'd be cool if they kept doing that every year, you know, every so often, because it was such, such a success the first time, you know, only it makes sense to capitalize it even more so, because people will watch this, and people will watch this. Yeah, Lorenzo's absolutely right. They've been doing good with organizing these events, and it'd be cool if they did more of them in the future. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Agree. Yeah. Caesar? Mm, pretty much hit the nail on the head. Uh, pretty much at, uh, I do definitely want to see them uh, go more in depth, like, and announce like more like on uh, the upcoming Zelda title for Wii U. Um, I definitely want to see them go in more depth uh, with the upcoming uh, Mario and Sonic game that's going to be coming out in 2016. I forgot about that. Mario and Sonic at the Sochi Olympics. Yeah. No, uh, no, is it, no, not Sochi. Mario and Sonic at the... Isn't it in... Rio, is it? Rio, Rio. Rio. Yeah, Rio de Janeiro. I got, I got confused yeah. here for a sec, yeah. At the, at the Rio Olympic Games. So this is going to be taking... So just like, so just, it's, like, just like the Rio Olympics, yeah. It's going to be taking place there. It's going to be so taking place in... It's going to be taking place, I believe, in Brazil. Yeah, like the next one. Really? Huh? I thought we were I, or maybe I'm thinking of FIFA. But yeah. I, I think it is... In, so, so I think they're gonna. So, like, obviously, we know that like one of the like even I many events that they're having, that they're gonna have is like a soccer one, or as they call it, a, a football. Yeah. Oh, football. <laughs> um. Yeah. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that game too. I'm wondering what new sports they'll introduce in that. And I'm still waiting for like an actual Mario Sonic platformer. Hopefully. Oh. Yeah, I want to yeah, see more like, Metal Gear. Yeah, like, definitely, yeah, def for the Mario Sonic, I definitely want to, like, see them, like, go in depth of, like, a, well, like, 
like some of the new characters they're going to be in. Like obviously we already like know that some of them are going to be in it due to, from what the trailer announced, the first one. I definitely want to see. I definitely want to see them like on definitely. So like obviously I know that they're going to be like more new characters, like as I hope as well, and like like what like new like uh more mini games that they're going to add as well to the game. Like this is obviously like this is this is the second one for the Wii U, so I definitely like want to see like uh, how much more they're going to add from the from the third one, which was the one that was added. Third one, which was the first one for the Wii U, the Mario and Sonic at the. Um, that's that wasn't the third one. That was the that was the fourth one, which was the first one for the Wii U. This is the fifth one in the series right now. For sure, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So um, any other like hopes and dreams and predictions that you guys have for E3? No, mm. well, in general or just. For Nintendo, because I I do have. Well, for, well, yeah, for Nintendo, I mean, because we're not gonna get into the other companies just yet. Oh, uh, honestly, uh, hmm, I obviously don't know if, if like uh, if this may not seem like a well, it could be a possibility, but. Mm. Far from like how many people like want this, I definitely would like to see announce maybe the possibility of a Mario Galaxy three. Yeah, that does like seem sort of like a stretch, but again, I w if they revealed Ma Mario Galaxy three at the C three, I would blow my mind away. Of course, like Cause bet Mario between like the so, between like the things like like. For like the Mario friends, like they're either like are like requesting like like do a Mario Galaxy three or the other like like part is either saying like do a Sunshine remake or Sunshine two a sequel to Sunshine. Yeah, like to to continue what I was saying, like Mario Galaxy on the Wii U, like do you have any idea what that would look like? Absolute beauty, that's what. And the original two already looked great on the Wii. An HD remake or a sequel to the original or one, Sunshine 2. Because we've, we've gotten sequels and remakes to Pikmin for like later consoles and same, you know, we, we, we just got Wind Waker HD and, you know, they recently, you know, made that whole thing where they can port GameCube games and upgrade them to HD for Wii U releases now, so people are theorizing that they will probably make some sort of virtual console or some HD re-release of Sunshine or, you know, sequel to it and considering with Splatoon people are saying that you know maybe it's more likely that you know we'll be getting it and because there's been an image floating around I'm pretty sure it could be probably be fake we don't know if it's real or not but you know there's been an image floating around of Mario with blood being playable in Splatoon but um I don't know I don't know if it's real or not probably not but you know that's one of the you know th that's pretty much one of the things that people cite back to like Mario remake on Mario Sunshine remake on Wii U, and I'm not exactly sure why people would want to see it, but then again, I'm not against the idea. You know, I know some people don't like Sunshine, but I wouldn't mind actually, you know, playing it on the Wii U in HD and seeing how the game was like. Like, I know exactly what goes on in the game and everything and all the details, but it would be cool to experience the game myself, you know, in a, in like a modern day setting. So, yeah, you know. 
like, I, I wouldn't mind seeing Mario Sunshine being ported over or, you know, sequelized. But, you know, Mario Galaxy, come on. You just can't beat that. Unless, unless they actually combine Mario Sunshine with Mario Galaxy and they put blood between the two planets. That's definitely yeah. really cool. Just using blood to go from planet to planet. And the thing, yeah, go ahead. And the thing that you were touching on in Splatoon, that definitely would be interesting if seeing Mario with Flood like as a as a playable character in Splatoon, because of how like people are like making up that like you know that that cool like fan theory of, of how like Splatoon is just like uh, of how like Mario like uh, failed like in Out of Fino, and then this is basically the uh, aftermath. <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah it's just, just imagine like if that was really true and, and Splatoon is basically like uh, Mario like fails like uh, in uh, his, his mission in the, fe- in the Isle of Delfino and like the next and then it starts like a whole new one and then like Splatoon is like the first one like in the failed one. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is oh, true. Yeah. So it's not. F- so it could. It could not be far from speculation. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, no new Mario game this year. I don't like. Oh great! Another Mario game. With the exception of a uh, Mario Maker, though. But you know we don't count that because you know Mario Maker is going to be awesome. I definitely really can't really wait. Not. Too. I definitely can't wait and make my own levels. I agree. I can't wait to make my crazy levels that are going to be almost impossible. Look forward to that, especially you, Lawrence. Mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna be doing that for like green and purple eventually. But anyways, um, I'm hoping that with the announcement of Ryu and Smash, we get street, we really do get Street Fighter Five on Ryu because the Wii U could use it at this point. Because there really haven't been too many fighting games besides like the Factor and uh, obviously Smash. Any good fighting games that is on the Wii U and for the Wii itself, like the last. Capcom fighting game we got on a Nintendo co- console, as far as I'm aware, was um, both Tatsunoko vs. Capcom and Street Fighter 4 3D for the 3DS. And, you know, considering how well they did on those consoles and how good they played on those, you know, it would it would be perfect to bring it over to bring Street Fighter 5 over to Wii U. I know right now at the moment it's only like a PS4 exclusive. I don't know if that game is on PC though, but, um, It'd be cool to see it on Wii U, and, you know, I think it'd be fine. I don't care if, like, they had to downgrade the high-fidelity graphics that the PS4 could produce, you know. I, I just want I just want Street Fighter on the Wii U. Yeah. Because, that is. Cause, you know, I, I, I want to play as Ryu, when, like, on the Nintendo console without having to go to Micro Center and play Street Fighter 4 on an <laughs> Xbox that may or may not be turned on. Which it usually I isn't. <laughs> I don't want to have to wait to play as Ehan. Plays all these characters like all together, like it, 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 it'd be it'd be really cool. And with Ryu, look, 
I don't know why it would make sense for them to add Ryu and Smash and not capitalize by tying in Street Fighter V on a Nintendo console. Even if they have to put it on 3DS, I just w I just want to see it show up. I, I you know what you hit the nail right in the head right there. You know it, it's like it's like trying to buy an Xbox One just because you want to play Killer Instinct. You know it's like <laughs> that it's 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 exclusive to one console. So why not bring it to multiple consoles at once? You know. Yeah. Street in Street Fighter Four, Street Fighter, the franchise itself has never really been a company exclusive thing. You know it's always been multi consoles. So why not? Yeah. Now let's get that whole Nintendo vs. Capcom thing started. You know, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's not going to be announced at this E3, but hopefully it can path that route. Well, it's like, um, start the Kickstarter now. There you go. Start it now. <laughs> I can't wait to get my Ryu Amiibo, hopefully when, <laughs> when that Armageddon comes around. Yeah. Right now, I, I gotta set my sights on Zero Suit, Palutena, Dark Pit, and all those good ones. I swear, if Zero Suit is a Victoria's Secret exclusive. It's a Victoria's <laughs> Zero Suit Sam is Victoria's Secret exclusive, announced at E3 this weekend. Dark Pit Hot Topic exclusive. Dark Hunt Dog is, pe like, Petco exclusive. That would really Petco make me cry. If there, were, if there were a Hot Topic exclusive Amiibo, I would cry. That would be pretty interesting. Like... Actually, Hot Topic has more of a chance of having exclusive Amiibo compared to other stores. When it, when you think more more deeply about it, because they do have official Nintendo products. Yeah, but if they start having Amiibo and exclusive Amiibo, I will cry. If they're gonna bring customers into the store, no doubt. Not the Mario CVS exclusive. <laughs> Dr. Mario is your doctor's office exclusive. You have to go get an appointment, and they'll, instead of a lollipop, you have to ask for the Amiibo. <laughs> amiibo, please. It, 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 it's Rite Aid exclusive. Like, it, you, you, yeah. have to, you have to go to your doctor, you have to prescribe the, the Dr. Mario Amiibo, and you have to go pick it up on a the specific day when you have it ready. Yeah. Agent Dr. Yeah. Mario. Oh, 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 how am I a health oh. person? I need a um, I need a Dr. Mario Amiibo. I need your Amiibo. Okay, I can help you. Let uh, me prescribe a Dr. Mario Amiibo. Okay, you need to come back on this day and get the Amiibo. Okay? Good. I if can only help. it were that easy. Yeah. Uh, oh, what, what would Game Watch be exclusive to? Um, hmm. That's a good question, actually. The Depot? Ah. Hmm. Uh, that just created more chaos because people are already hating on New York just because the Nintendo World stores there. Well, those... we'll, we'll, we'll have like a separate discussion about that later on. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Nintendo, for Nintendo World customers, it is never that easy, that easy or you know, not stress inducing to close from that store. But yeah, us, us in particular. I, I just realized something. What if they give you the Dr. Mario Amiibo with like a prescription bottle? <laughs> That'd be so cute. Surrounded by multivitamins. <laughs> gummy candies. You know, I wouldn't mind that. That would be so cool, actually. That'd be a pretty cool box, yeah. <laughs> Even though it's not gonna happen. But hey, we could try. Maybe we can actually find a prescription bottle that can fit amiibos inside. So we could just put Dr. Mario in it. Make the dream come true. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Alamar, you know Alamar would be exclusive to NASA. Like oh, one of those, like, like yeah, one of the, but yeah, like you, you, you have, Mars. like you have to go to the, like to one of those like uh, shops that's around like the NASA space station, and you have to go there. You have to go live on Mars, like for for, for, for the rest of your life to get to Alamar. <laughs> that's gonna be fun. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. We'll have an episode about what Amiibo is exclusive to what later on. Maybe not Meatloaf Clock, but you know, something, something. But yeah. I want that Garatina Amiibo. Oh wait, I have one right here. <laughs> you know, actually that just brings up a good point. I really want the Pokemon, like, 
you know how they have the Pokemon tr- pretty much the Pokeballs as trophies. I really want I want to make sure that all Pokeballs are in all Pokemon are in Smash. Um well, not all of them comes in that. That's like Well, a fair a fairer amount. I feel like, like not everyone's Yeah, you know, and I, I well I mean like in terms of the Pokeballs though. Yeah. Uh besides yeah, that Yeah, that that's fine. I think. I mean, to me, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, D- DLC Pokeballs. That and I think I think also if they sold Pokeballs that you can like use in game or something like that, you know, something really cute, but it's similar to the amiibo. It could even be an amiibo. It's really cool. I think it could be a good idea. Like, like, what good money maker. Like, what if it's an amiibo with like an exclusive like you know event Pokemon on it? Yes, exactly. And you know what? It, it, this is the first way, year that Nintendo actually made a physical profit. They made a profit because of the Amiibo. Spiked their sales, and now they're like the richest game company out there because Amiibo. And it'd be cool if it was like a really good Pokemon, like, you know, Eevees and all that stuff. Like, not, not, not the Pokemon Eevee itself, but that would be cool to have. But, you know, the effort values, like, inside of them. Yeah. Make them worth the money. But, yeah. Um, but, um, one more thing before we move on to the other companies. I would like to see more Mario Kart DLC, because I really, really enjoy playing on those Switch. These are for the Green and Purple episodes, and I really think that Mario Kart has a lot more potential for it, like Hyrule Warriors and Smash, and I don't think they're stopping here. I think we're going to get a lot more, you know, tracks and a lot more cups, and hopefully we do get the battle mode eventually, because I do yeah. miss that mode too, as much as Eric and yeah. do. And yeah, Eric misses it a lot. Yeah. Our lands on motorcycles. God, games on motorcycles. Heck, heck, you know. Zelda on motorcycles. You know what though? Pac-Man was playable in the arcade GP games because those those Mario yeah. games were developed by Namco. So it'd be cool if like you know beyond the the, the Pac-Man Amiibo costume that you could wear, it'd be cool if we could see Pac-Man as DLC eventually. Could you imagine Sega All Stars Racing plus Mario Kart? Dude, people have been wanting that. I want. That would be so cool. Mario and Sonic at the Sega and Nintendo All Stars Racing. Uh, that, just, would be, yeah, just, that would be freaking amazing. Just imagine now having racing as Sonic as well, like not just having the uh, racing suit that you get from Demiwa, but just having racing him in the game. And the fact that it would be the, the like the characters from the game included, we would be racing as a uh, rail from Wreck-It Ralph. <laughs> That'd be cool. Rick R- R- and Ralph is DLC eventually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna race it. I'm gonna wreck it. You know, Ralph showed up as DLC in Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. So it was really I awesome. Think, I think Nintendo still owes Ralph, you know, a little debt of gratitude for featuring Bowser in their movie. And Mario. Mario wasn't in the movie. Yes, he was. Be eventually, but not yet. He wasn't. He was in a single scene though. Like, no, but was, you didn't really scene. see him. He, he was. was um, he was mentioned. The only he was Mario Jumperman there, was there. No, he wasn't there. He was not in the movie at all. I'm sure he. Oh, let me let me look. He was sure. Not, he was. Let me check. Lawrence, this out. he was not in the movie at all. They already said he wasn't in. Hmm. All those like you're 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 thinking of the Tapper scene. All of those people look like Mario and Luigi, but they're not Mario and Luigi. You just think that because they have the red and green hats, which. Someone, admittingly, when I went to go see Wreck It Ralph in theaters, someone actually thought that one of the people were Luigi, even though they obviously didn't look like Luigi. Huh. Because my thing is, if they if they added Pac-Man, why the hell did they not put Mario? Well, the thing is, is that um, the 
reason why they didn't like I, I know we're straying off topic and we need to end this soon but the reason why they didn't add Mario in that movie was because they didn't find anything for him to do except be in the background Sonic was in the background I mean he could have done that but you know that would have like if you ask me because Mario is such an important character in the game he probably would have taken away from Ralph being in one scene if he was in the background and then again people are always looking for background characters but Mario is definitely like the one primary example of like you know where's Mario like he's like the worst Waldo of Rick and Ralph basically yeah even though you can't find him yeah. because of nothing he was only he was mentioned in the movie and he's um he, he's he's gone on record to apparently be the central plot point for the next movie yeah so, but in terms of, in yeah. terms of Mario Kart DLC, like if there is like more plan, like for like DLC courses, like one of the ones I would love to receive, like I don't understand why they didn't like include this in Mario Kart Eight. It seemed like the perfect ones included in. If they continue with the DLC courses, they really need to bring back Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart Double Dash. Because be that like, because be that like, I mean look at it this way, like we've had like the already. Like, we've had, like, the original one, like, re remade, like, a couple of times. We've had the 64 one uh, in Mario Kart Wii. We've had the Game Boy Advance version remade a couple of times. So, and the fact that with Mario Kart 8 being the latest one, like, I was wondering, like, why didn't they include uh, Mario Kart Double Dash as Bowser Castle, so, like, as, a, as one of the retro tracks, like, in the game. Cause like they finally they finally remade like 64 Rainbow's Road after like the the original Rainbow Road from SNES has been remade like so many times and even it still got like into like as part of as part of the, one of the DLC like cups like in the game and like we finally had like the 64 version like remade for the first time in Mario Kart game so I was wondering like why didn't they include Bowser's Castle from Mario Kart Double Season brings up a really, you know, solid point. You know, I, I have a feeling, you know, maybe we will see Bowser's Castle, hopefully the, the double at, double dash edition in, you know, at DLC. Like, it, it, when I think of DLC waves, that stage is probably likely to show up in one of them. I just don't know which, obviously, because you know, this is all just wild mass guessing at this point. But I would like to see that stage come back. And it will it, and it. It, and it was like one of my favorite like Bowser castles. I, in terms of like obviously now like Mario Kart 8 is my favorite, but before Mario Kart 8, like uh, the one in that dash like was my favorite. It's it's now my second favorite. Mm. Oh, shit. Some characters I would actually like to see show up that I think would fit perfectly. Um, for one is Pit, because considering how like um, how lighthearted and comedic. Kidicarous, Kidicarous universe has gotten in recent years thanks to Uprising. I have a feeling he'd be probably a perfect fit for the game. And who knows? That definitely would be interesting. Maybe we can even get Palutena or Dark Pit. <laughs> oh, I just imagine Dark. Just imagine Dark Pit. You know, it'd be so cool. <laughs> and we'll have like a Kidicarous stage. And just to quickly, just just jump back on two things like to add back to on the higher warriors like. For a weapon that, if they would, if they were gonna go on, like more about for like the weapons, like I definitely would like to see like, uh, like, like the ice rod like included in the game. I mean, we already have like the fire rod, but I definitely would like to see like the like an ice rod weapon in the game as well. I think the ice rod is likely. I, I, I already and, have a feeling of what what it could do. It could probably just like freeze all the enemies on screen and then we could pull like a sub zero and just crush all of them. Yeah. Yeah, like, and for another one, like, uh, if, like, Toon Link, uh, isn't included, like, I hope he does get included for, like, if, like, he's not, if he doesn't become, like, one of, like, the new, like, playable, like, DLC characters, like, uh, why not, like, uh, give, like, uh, Darunia, like, the Skull Hammer, the one from Wind Waker. Yeah. That would be interesting, but... That, that that would just be like uh, if like Toon Link isn't included, then we would give it to Darwinia. But if Toon Link uh, becomes like one of the playable DLC characters, then then I would uh, hope 
then that then I would consider like that weapon to Toon Link. I just imagine Toon Link would probably be like, catch a weight now. Because using that skull hammer in America was fun though. I just loved it. And like it like obviously like uh the main way it was like basically like smacking down the opponents and then they would get like squished and then die. But, like you could also if you like swing it, like if you like move like the analog stick and then press B, you could like use the skull hammer as sort of like a baseball bat thing. And you could basically like swing the enemies. It was so much fun doing that. <laughs> like Lawrence, like you remember how like you could like do that when we go right? Like you could like use the skull hammer and swing the enemies as if you were like hitting them with a baseball bat. Hmm. I'm sure you remember doing that though. Be it that when we create yeah. your favorite. I remember that. <laughs> it was so much fun doing that. <laughs> well, right then, I guess that uh, pretty much caps it off for Nintendo in terms of like you know DLC and future hopes that we um, wish to see in their announcements. Who knows? It may be something completely different than what we mentioned, but this is all just mass speculation. So you know, take our guesses and everything with a grain of salt. If we get anything right, then booyah! Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so um, we, we gotta make this real quick before we close up. Um, anything else you guys expect from other video game companies at E3? It could be from Sega, Sony, Microsoft. Uh, Mirror's Edge Two. Anyone? Mirror's Edge Two. Yep, yep. I heard about it. I want it. There you go. How to not make EA the worst company in the world? Mirror's, Mirror's Edge. Edge That Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which I, I watched, it was funny, I watched the TED Talks about uh, about a bunch of games yesterday, it was about a video games, and they were talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, um, and they were talking about Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Those are the last games I expected to see them even talk about. In a TED, TED Talk, at a TED Talk, that I was, like... Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm kind of stemming off topic. I did TED Talks yesterday. And so while I was there, I was seeing a lot of other teenagers that were also doing TED Talks. And one of these teenagers who was really good did a TED Talks on video games and how it's healthy for you. And he talked about game theories and he talked about um, uh, particularly battle Battlefront or Warfront. And uh, he talked about Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and the robots, and he talked about Five Nights at Freddy's and how children are stuffed into animatronic suits. And so everybody was like, I've never heard of this game, and I wanted to slap my face. Because I'm like, how do you not hear about this? all over the news. And it's pretty much like video game. Yeah. Yeah, video games are important. Simple. And so, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, definitely looking forward to that. Um, yeah. I can't. Uh, uh, I think that's really it. I want to see a Sonic game. I want to see a Sonic game. New, a better Sonic game, and not Sonic Boom, Fire, and Ice. Besides the recent uh, Sonic Boom, which um, I'm not going to be judging the book by its cover, because, you know, for all we know, um, Sega may just finally get big red buttons some more time to work on this game, so it'll be more positively received, but I'm not gonna judge a book by its cover or anything, because, you know, we all know that the Sonic Boom comics and, um, you know, TV show have been doing fine, and, you know, we're not gonna, the fact that they're making a sequel in the first place is like, you know, they had some sort of glimpse of confidence that they'll, this time it'll probably sell, so hopefully they don't make any, you know, errors with this, but yeah. I want to see yeah, another I, Oh, I agree. That's pretty much talking of like I only really see I only in terms of other companies I only really can think of like Sega and like the new Sonic Boom game that they're making. If with the fact that the yeah we, yeah we need to like think of like okay so I would say like yeah they didn't really do well like with. Uh, the ones for the 3DS and Wii U, especially the ones. And they admitted Wii. it. They outright. It. Yeah. They have and You know what? It, so. it takes a lot from a company to say we kind of screwed up. Isn't that like? Yeah, like. Dominoes or pizza or whatever. 
Yep. And he, yeah, so. He, he said it on the commercial page later. But yeah, that's Caesar is it. So, with the fact that now Sega is like going forward and now making a new one, like, we're hoping that they're giving like a, the company a, uh, like the one that's been producing the, the boom games, like, we hope that they're giving them more time and that they learn that you. Never rush a game. Uh, you need to like give it more time, and hopefully that yep. this new one. Yes, up... <laughs> yeah, have they, yeah, like, because uh, obviously, like, we all know that that one was obviously like, in, in particular, like, uh, people probably still call like the worst one, and probably people refer to Boom as like the second worst. Like, so obviously now that they need to like obviously look back, and now that if they see that the first two that. They didn't do well, obviously, the, the Rise of Lyric and the Shattered Crystal is up. So, obviously, we need to hope that they give the producers more time and that this uh, next Sonic Boom game will end up being, like, really, really good and hopefully a successor to the first two that ended up not doing well. And that they learn to rush uh, the games that, they're, that, that they learn to make sure that they give the producers more time and tell them to not rush. And so learn from their mistakes. Look back at Sonic 06, Sega. Look back at Sonic 06. That's Which was where a you first. Fr- no, that- it's yes, such an amazing game. game. Look back at that game, Sega. That was your first screw up right there. No, it wasn't. It was like, such like, a good game. Like, listen, it, it has its pros and cons, but there's a reason why people make three hour long re- reviews about why the game isn't all, all it lived up to be. Hey, I know you. You're some call me Johnny. Oh, you are the great Clement. Yeah. But yeah. Um. The music was great in that in, in Sonic 06. You know, the cutscenes were beautifully animated, and you know the Sonic sec- sections aren't particularly terrible. Like, you know, they're decent enough. But you know, everything else about the game, you know, was. You know, yeah, like I, one of the. Sega needs to learn yeah, like, one of the things that at least I'll give Sonic 06 that is, like, the cutscenes and that they were good. I mean, heck, the series is pretty good. Yeah, like, the series is good. It's, just, it's had its fair share of, like, bad games in it. And it started to, like... Go on, Rick? Because, yeah, like, you know, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I want Sonic to succeed. It's not that... It's not that I don't, like, want him to fail or anything like that. Like, I want the main Sonic series to succeed. I want Sonic Boom to succeed. Like, I want Sonic to be back in, like, his full glory, like how he was back then. Because I, I really miss the days when we had, like, universally praised good Sonic games. And, you know, nowadays, that those days are kind of a rarity. Because we really haven't gotten a good Sonic game, like, a universally praised good Sonic game since, like, Sonic or Sonic Colors. That game came out like a while back, and Sonic Colors in terms of Lost World. Lost World wasn't, you know, it wasn't a bad game, it was decent enough, but, you know, it's not... Yeah, it didn't, didn't receive, it didn't receive that much, like, like good praise. I wouldn't say it did what uh, Colors did. It's great music and great cutscenes, though. But, you know... Yeah, I'll, get, I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and like, uh, if you're gonna, if you're gonna like, uh, add Shadow, like, uh, at least give him like more stuff to do. Like, don't Shadow <laughs> make him important. Don't add him as like uh, something that they just added, like, uh, first just to like uh, annoy Sonic, like, uh, just to annoy. S- to the to the f- yeah, yeah, and he basically just did nothing but just like show up and like, uh, but you're not going to that portal, you're weak, I'm going to show you how weak you are by fighting you. And that was pretty much it, once he went through the portal, he didn't show up for the rest of the game until the end of the game. Yeah, like, what the hell? But yeah, but other than that, you know, Sega, do good. Please. Yeah. Yes, please do good. Your, yeah, your real ones. Like, I'm really hoping that, like, that, like this one, like, that this one, like, ends up being like, really good, and that it will like push for more like good Sonic games, like uh, after like this one. 
Because I don't want Sonic Success just to rely on him like being in Smash and then, then going to like the mobile games. I really don't want them to go in that direction. Yeah. Not really. I haven't really thought much of life for Sony and Microsoft. <laughs> yes, they can't really, you know, no offense to Sony and Microsoft fans or the companies themselves, but I really don't have any high expectations for them this year. You know, I, there, there's rumors of a Banjo Kazooie game coming besides Ukulele, but, um, or, or a, rare, a rare IP in, uh, being revived. Um, you know, I look forward to what they have in store. I just don't have too much big ex ex expectations at the moment, and, you know, even then, I'm still not going to be getting it. I agree. Hmm? Okay. Okay, so hi, I am Royal Dude Lorenzo, also known as Blue Link on Team Triforce. Currently have a few a uh, bunch of episodes of Lorenzo's Adventures coming out. As well as I'm going to be starting up the Lorenzo cast in a few more weeks again. And so we're going to have a great time. Uh, whoop de doo Subscribe, like, comment, share. You know the drill, everybody. And so this is Royal Dude Lorenzo. And now we'll and move this, to Caesar. And this is Nintendo. And this is Nintendo fan Guso, aka Green Link of Team Triforce. Mm. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel, for I am currently uploading uh, Smash videos, uh, like as of now, uh, Daily. as of now, uh, re replay, like basically like replay stuff, like like showing like the Maya battles I have saved as replays, Amiibo battles I'm currently doing as well, and uploading some like Mario Kart 8 videos as well, so please be sure to go check out my channel, Nintendo Fan Kuso, link will be in the description below. Finally, Ray. And yes, for those of you who are coming upon this channel for the first time, first off, welcome, w welcome down, ladies and gentlemen, and um, it's great to have you. I'm Ray, also known as Meatloaf Man, and um, you are happen to, you're happening upon the Meatloaf Vlog, which is a s series that I've recently been bringing back because I had to put it on hiatus for college, and hopefully um, I can get more episodes in more often. It is a bi-weekly series, and um, I do have some ideas for new topics, so hopefully we can get some more updated uh, in, in like the coming weeks. And I look out for some other features on my channel as well. You can just check them out by clicking my username after this episode is over. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we look forward to E3, see what they have in store for reels, and hopefully maybe we could rejoin and maybe we could do like a uh, recollection episode. But, um, yeah, you know. Um, next episode of Meatloaf Vlog, though, um, besides, um, I guess after like you know the whole e3 thing um we got some very important stuff to talk about because a certain other franchise out there is about to reach a really huge uh cent centric milestone so it's pretty pretty worth a discussion and probably would like you guys back on for that so yeah but until n next time um this is ray nunez also known as meatless man and you guys already did your outro so we're going to be ending it off right here, so thank you guys for listening, and tune in next time for the next week of vlog. See you guys later, and look out for some new videos coming soon. Peace. Bye. Peace. Adios. Goodbye. Hey. Hey, and die. No, no, don't, don't die. You, so you, you, got, you have to watch the Nintendo Didact with Iwata, Sakurai, and Miyamoto and Reggie. <laughs> Possibly Anuma, if Zelda doesn't get delayed. Please don't get delayed. Alright, bye guys. Yeah.